Football Fan TV. I'm here in Tallis Stadium, joined by none other than Jack Byrne. Chris, Jack, thanks very much for taking the time out to come and join me. No problem. So we're just kind of, uh, we, we've been doing some kind of background profiles on players and stuff like that. We had Simon Power from um, Norwich Under 23s uh, and the uh, Ireland Under 21s on with us the other day. So we're just trying to go around the league now and, and get some background on some players. So we start, thought we'd start with yourself. Uh, a long time in the, in the making, I suppose. Uh, but let's uh, start kind of with how you came about playing football, who you started playing with. Yeah, so I was, um, you know, young kid um, from town and got brought up to um, St. Kevin's um, by my father when I was younger. He just brought me up and, and uh, you know, there was no team. I think Belvo didn't have a team at that stage and Stella Martyrs, they usually would have been the ones around my area and they didn't have a team for whatever reason uh, underage. So I went up to St. Kevin's and started the mini leagues, as they call it, up there. And then I was playing a year older because my cousin was playing as well. So just took it from there and uh, the rest is history, kind of. Yeah, so it's from St. Kevin's then you moved to Man Manchester City, yeah? What age were you when you were headed over there? I was, all, I was back and forth. Um, I was obviously going on trials to a few clubs. Um, Tottenham, United, uh, Arsenal, City were kind of the ones that I kind of narrowed it down to. And then, I, uh, you know, I, I, I went over there. I got an offer, I think, from when I was about to then um, to move over when I was 14. Um, the rest of the teams wouldn't take me till I was 16. I kind of wanted to go early because um, I just thought it would have been the best thing for me to kind of go over early and just try with and the academies in. and stuff. Yeah, just try and settle in before you know I hit under 18s and, and and could start playing games. So I went over a year early and um, you know I signed a, a five-year deal. So I had the security behind me and I was just going over back and forth for a few months and then when I was 14 I moved over and and. Uh, and I just took it from there. Yeah, it, was, it was at that stage where Manchester City were starting to, starting to get money and yeah. starting to get pl big players in. And I know yeah. Patrick Vieira then took up a coaching role. Was it with the under-23 yeah. team? Um, when I first signed, he was down. He was kind of down ambassador work. He was uh, he was just coming in and training with the under-18s every now and again. And and then uh, he was going around the stadium and just showing his face. And then when I, when I hit me second season in the... In the under 18s, he took the reserve team job, um, which was good for me because I knew he liked me and and um, yeah, he, he, he seemed to take a shine to me at the time and and uh, you know he gave me a chance and, and, and an opportunity to play regularly for the 23s and then then he obviously uh, he was the one that was uh, was pushing the boat out for me to to go on loan to Holland and uh, an opportunity I never thought I would have had so. Um, you know, I'm very grateful for for him and, and, and not only him his, his coaching staff was, was very good at the time and uh, there's some good people at the club and there's, there's still some good people there I know he's taken a, a lot of his coaching staff to um, to Nice with him but um, you know I, I, was, I was very grateful for, for, for the for the help they gave me during that spell like. Yeah and obviously with the experience he had he up there with Roy Keane is probably the best centre midfielder yeah. of the, the Premier League era anyway Um but it was nice having someone like him, you know, of his stature, kind of singing your praises all the time. Yeah, it was. It was, it, it was nice, but he was hard as well, you know. If you, if you didn't do well, he'd, he'd, he'd let you know. And I think I think he liked the fact that, you know, we had a we had a good group there that wanted to do well for themselves. And, and we had a good side and we got far in the UEFA Youth League and we won the Under-21 Champions League at the time, the International Cup, whatever it was called. So we had a good group there, and we were all, you know, we all worked hard and we all drove each other. So, but he was obviously the 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 voice behind all yeah. that, and he was leading it all all the time. And he's a brilliant coach, a very good coach, and he's worked under, you know, obviously Mourinho and you know, obviously some, as well. yeah, top top manager. So um, it was good that he he gave a li he kind of gave a little bit of you know what he learned from all them and some of his sessions. So. Sometimes he come in like and and uh, I think we had like tour um in with us one oh, time yeah, training tour, and, like having having like and then the players coming in he'd be taking the fullbacks and stuff like that so to have that opportunity you know as a young player when he's bringing in different people for for mm. sessions World Cup winners so, yeah, yeah you know what I mean so um uh, it was great like so um yeah it was a uh, it was it was a good time in, in my career. Yeah, and then 
talk me through your, your move to Holland. How, how did the, the move to Holland of all places come about? So, I was playing, I was doing well in the UEFA Youth League, and I was playing well in the 23s. And uh, they were coming and watching a game, uh, a couple, they were coming and watching a couple of games. And uh, um, I had an option to go to Bolton uh, as well. I think Neil Lennon was the manager there. And the club wouldn't let me go to the championship. They didn't think I was physically ready to play in the championship at that time, and they kind of said no. Like you know, they, without saying no, they kind of said no. I oh, mm. was looking for a loan. In a polite like, way, I, yeah. yeah, I kind of needed a loan at that stage. It was after doing as well as I could in the in the 23s. And uh, Fiera came to me, and he, to be fair, he sorted me out. He kind of said, look. There's a there's a Dutch team in here that really like it. He said um, we had a player on loan there the year before, Albert Rusnak, Slovakian international, really good footballer. So um, Fiorda came to me um, the day before I was flying home for the summer and said, "Look, I knew they were kind of, I knew they were watching like, but obviously I didn't know that it was a big step. They were in the air division. They were, yeah. they were a good club like. Um, so he came to me and said, "Look, uh, I'm gonna try and push this trophy." He said, "I think you." I think it'd be great for you. I think it'd be great for your career. Um, he said, uh, "You know, I think you should do it, and you know, I think you should be, you should be, uh, you should be basically hockey in the club's phone over to let you go." So I left it for a while. I we spoke to um, Fergal Hargan there and Brian Marwood, who were really good to me there when I was when I was at the club, and they were quite close with, with Patrick and and um, Fergal is or- Irish. He played in the league. I think he played by Bowers and so. Um, um, he he rang me sometime in May and said, "Look, we uh, we want you to sign a new three-year deal, and um, Vieira wants you to go to Holland." So we thought, "Happy days!" Like you know, this yeah. is oh, brilliant for me. So I uh, snapped a hand off and, uh, and and I went, and you know, thank God it went well over there. Yeah, it, it seems you really made a huge impression, and you know, I think every Irish fan was were thinking, you know, this was a rising star. Yeah. Um, did you get to the team of the season that year? Yeah, I was doing well. I got in a couple of team of the weeks and a couple of team of the months, and you know I was doing well. Uh, I was only 19. Um, it suited me down to the ground the way they played, played out from the back, got on the ball. I remember we played against Ajax and we had something like 65% possession, and we lost one 0 at home, and we got clapped off the pitch, you know. And I think I remember we won a game against uh, I can't remember AZ Alkmaar or something at home, and. Um, we went long ball, kind of, well, not long ball, but we went a little bit more direct and we won the game and the fans weren't happy with us after the game saying they didn't like that kind of football. It was a proper football in town, like, it's uh, it's crazy to think that, you know, you get a win and the fans aren't happy with you sometimes, you know. But, you know, uh, it suited me down to the ground. I, I, I played, you know, every game I was fit, I played, I got, I got an injury, made me debut against FC20 um, in the middle of September and... and then played against PSV on the Tuesday, and then you know we didn't look back. We, we, we kicked on, and uh, I probably looking back, I should have stayed there, you know, for another year. Um, but I just felt at the time that I had achieved all I probably could have achieved, and I didn't. I didn't think if I had stayed there, I maybe would have got better options than I had at at that time when it came to leave, you know. So I thought if I'm if I'm gonna come back here and do well again for another year am I going to have better options than I have right now I probably wasn't going to have you know so I just thought look I may as well move now instead of you know in a year yeah there's uh, no harm in taking a risk look it's a gamble that uh, didn't pay off at the time obviously um, went from there to Blackburn and uh, difficult you know as a, as a as a young footballer and you, you get told you're going to be you know I, I had loads of options I had probably more options than I've ever had even when I was a young a, a young kid going away to, to Man City, I had more options at the time when I was coming back from Holland because of how well I'd done and because of how well, you know, obviously how highly thought of Vieira and stuff were and, and uh, they were giving me back ends then for other clubs and, you know, we got we got, uh, we got told that I was going to play for, for Blackburn, you know, Alan Coyle's telling me that I was going to play every minute of every game. It was... You know, 40 minutes away from Manchester, you're thinking that the club might be going up having a look at you on a Tuesday night when they're not playing or whatever, you know. And you're getting told this kind of stuff and, and uh, you go to a, a, a club and, you know, for whatever reason, your face just doesn't fit and you don't play as many games as you want. And 
it's hard, you know, you lose fitness and then you lose, you know, match sharpness and, and uh, you might get your chance then, you know, two months mm. in, three months but in, I imagine it's when, hard. Like, I imagine you know? when you went there, your confidence would have been sky high and then exactly, it, it, you know, it takes you, away. Then. For the first time in my career, I kind of took a tumble, you know, when I was kind of thinking, well, I need to get back on the pitch to take to get this going and I, I never had the opportunity to get back on the pitch. I didn't play after September. I think I played a game against Leeds in the in the Carabao Cup or whatever that cup is called, the AFL Cup. I think in it's the Sep- Carabao Cup. Yeah, in yeah. September. I didn't play for two weeks before that, my last game. And then I played that game in the Carabao Cup. I think it was the middle of September. And then that was it. I didn't play to, after that. During a relegation scrap, you know, and the, the manager was playing 4-4-2 and, and he didn't see me as, as, a, as a box-to-box midfielder. And to be fair, if he had told me that he was bringing me in you know, and he was going to play at the start of the season. If he had said, Look, I'm going to play 4 4 2, and you're going to be one of the two in the middle of the park, I wouldn't never have went there. Man City would never have sent me there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, look, you're told you're going to play in the 10, and, and you know, the game's, the game's going to go through you or, or whatever. And, uh, and when you go to a place, it doesn't happen. And uh, you just have to take it on the chin, you know, and, and, and try and dust it off and, and, and move on. Yeah. So, how did your move to Wigan come about then? We played. Um, I obviously played against United um, when I was younger, um, the under 18s and the under 23s. And I always seemed to do well against them. Um, played against them in Old Trafford, a big crowd there. I think there was like 25,000 people there on a, on a Monday night. Um, and done well in the game. And Warden Joyce, then a couple of months after that, after we went to Holland, he had got the. Sorry, after we went to Blackburn in the, in the summer, he had got the Wigan job. And he was United's reserve team manager at the time, so he would have seen me. And he was very close to Brian Marwood. And, um, you know, I kind of knew that the deal was could have been done uh, leading up to January. I knew he, he liked me. I knew, you know, Wigan obviously couldn't go out at the time, spending fortunes on players, and they were kind of looking for young players to come in and try, try and, you know, develop them and maybe sell them or whatever. Yeah. And... That's why they obviously gave Warden Joyce the job at the time because they wanted to, you know, develop players and and uh, look they were in the bottom three and they thought you know what worst comes to worst I'm gonna be at a club, you know the man just signed the four year deal or whatever he signed they thought there's no way he's gonna get sacked. He only got the job in November and uh, what I was told by the by the board no he was never gonna get sacked. And then, so you were given guarantees? Yeah, like, yeah, well, guarantees. There's no guarantees in football, but I just thought, you know, he's not going to get sacked. He's just got the job, and yeah. he had a big name coming from United. He obviously had Alex Ferguson backing him and stuff like that, you know, because they would have been close when they were at United. Um, went in, uh, signed a three-and-a-half-year deal on deadline day. Took me a while to obviously think about if I really wanted to do it. I still had two years left on my contract at Man City. I could have went out on loan again, could have went back to Holland on loan. Could have went back to Holland in the summer, um, but you know, we got offered a three-year deal, three and a half-year deal in the Championship at the time. Um, a manager who, you know, I thought, yeah, he'll develop young players here, and went in, and I think four weeks later or something, I was only getting fit. Um, I was told I was going to play on the Tuesday. I think we were playing Aston Villa. I was only coming back from injury. We were after losing, I think, to Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, was told you're going to play on Tuesday against Aston Villa. That's going to be my first game. That's the first time I was really fit. And uh, come in on the Monday morning, the games on the Tuesday, man, just sacked. You know, man, these things people don't see. And then a uh, caretaker manager comes in, and and look, he's just keeping things ticking over, really, isn't he? So. Uh, you know, he obviously didn't throw me in straight away. It took me another, I think, month maybe to to get in the to get in, you know, coming off the bench and before I knew it the season was over and it was it was we were in League One and signing there I thought, well if they go down I'm gonna be playing either you know, if we stay up great. If not I'm gonna be playing top League One with a good young manager and it'll be a good, you know, place for me. We'd be winning games. It was a change from relegation. And I thought, you know, we'd be winning games and be a good chance for me to show, you know, even in League One that, you know, it's still still a decent player or whatever. And uh look I had three years left of my contract then in the summer. New manager comes in then and uh you know budgets are cool. You know, you go down the League One, budgets are cool. No more parachute payments or 
stuff like that from the Premier League when when they were in the Premier League yeah. and uh, the highest there and it was you know Nick Powell at the time who was there from United he's a top player you know what I mean yeah. and, and they could probably afford to have two or three number tens when they were in the Championship but when you get relegated to League One manager comes in he has to make decisions and who's going to play every week and who's not going to play every week and try and balance the books and you know. We had to move on, and and uh, that was that, and you know, then I end up I end up going to Oldham. And um, look, I, I just bought a house in Manchester. That was one of the reasons why I, I wanted to stay around. The earlier I thought I was going to be at Wigan for three and a half years, but football, it's never like that, really, is it? You don't know what's going to happen from one one transfer window to the next. So I went to Oldham, and then. Um, you know, done done well for the four six months. Had a good few options, and um, you know, Wigan were trying to do a swap there with Hearts. They were looking to sign a player, but I didn't really want to move out of the area at the time. Settled there, you know, yeah. been there for a the long time. And you're kind of your Manchester, Wigan, and, yeah. and Oldham, kind of. All. And it was the same league, you know. Most of my options were kind of in the same league, or else the SBL, obviously Hearts, and um, I wasn't looking at going abroad back to Holland or any, anything like that. So. I was thinking, you know, all of them's in the same league as they were in the same league as Wigan at the time. So, just thought, look, what's the worst that can happen? I signed a two and a half year deal there, and uh, obviously got relegated. And uh, my new owner comes in, and you know, obviously people know what's going on there with the financial troubles. Um, and I didn't really want to play in League Two at the time. Yeah. Um, so I had a chance to go to Kilmarnock and work on that Steve Clark and tried hard to push that through because I thought, you know, if worse comes to worse, I go up to Kilmarnock or wherever and I, and I don't play or, you know, at least I'll be learning from a top manager. Yeah. He is a top manager. He's really good. Did and he work as his number two under Mourinho? Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah and under... I then think, West Brom. And yeah, and Liverpool. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, right. and Villa as well. So he's been at good clubs, like, and... Really good manager and a, and, a, and a really good person as well. So, um, look, I, I was there much of a difference between the SPL and and the Championship League one? Um, yeah, I'd say, but look, it's not comparable to the Championship. I don't think you know. Okay. Um, obviously, I didn't play enough games to really say what it's like, but it's hard. It's hard to put a level on it mm. because I didn't. I'd really, say it's very physical. Though, yeah, yeah, it is very physical league and. But you only play once a week, so everybody's fresh, you know okay. what I mean? So it's uh, it's different to League One where you play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, and you play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, you know what I mean? So uh, it's uh, it's hard to kind of put a level on it, but, you know, I enjoyed my time up there. I still enjoyed it. I, I, I learned under a uh, really good manager, and I didn't play that much. As much as, much as I wanted it, I didn't. I obviously didn't play as much as I wanted it. But I still say he's a really good manager and a, and a really good person. So you know, it was it was good to to be up there and and, and learning from him. Mm. He's going on now to be Scotland manager. If I'm right, is that yeah. right, Connor? The cameraman with the stats there. Yeah. yeah. So like, he's obviously got his rewards for having a, a, a really good season. But he's, I think he was linked with the he turned down the Rangers job. I know that in the summer. I think he was linked with the Celtic job. So uh, mm. well, he guided the second man to third. Yeah, it's unbelievable achievement yeah. for the for the budget that they had and. And um, you know, no disrespect to the players, but the players that were there, you know, I think they were second bottom when he came in, and you know, to finish third is a unbelievable achievement. Yeah, and some of them would probably have been your teammates as well. Yeah, they were like they were they were up. They were, it was obviously well, the majority of the squad there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know, they're obviously they were a good team. You know, Jordan Jones, I think now has gone to Rangers, like so. I think a few of them might move on. Um, but yeah. It was it was it was a good experience. Yeah, and then you're back, Shamrock Rovers playing here week in week out. Um, I know you touched on Stephen Bradley before being the the reason why you came here, but how have you enjoyed the season so far? And what's what's the now we're halfway over the season now. So what's your kind of uh, thoughts on on the league and the standard, the crowds even because yeah. they've all you know yeah, since you, since been you've been up, back yeah. and now the crowds have gone up a, yeah. a good bit. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's over me now. No, but I <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I look at I, I was uh, I don't know. I was probably a bit surprised that uh, you know the league how well it, how well some of the teams are run and you know you hear some stories that 
you know, it's not professional or this and that. Um, but no, I don't agree with it. I think it's I think it's a good league. I think maybe a few more teams, you know, being full time might help it and 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 stuff like that and maybe better facilities in the in the stadium or whatever. But I've really enjoyed being back here. I think you know the home games are brilliant for us. Um, I think our fans are great when when they come out and support us and. I can understand it's difficult to get out to a, you know, a Monday game away in Finn Harps yeah, and then a yeah. Friday game at home and you have to come in. Sometimes you have to pick and choose which games you go to because, you know, financially, it, you know, it is difficult to get to all the games. Yeah. I know the, I know Declan Devine, the Derry City manager, was, was quite vocal about it. Yeah, uh, no, but it is like, especially when, like, we go a week now where we don't have a game and, and uh, we played three games last week. So, you know, it's hard when you, when you see stuff like that because... Just say, for instance, when the when the fixture list is out at the start of the season in the Premier League, and you, you you know you can look and say, right, well, on this day you've got Silver Sunday, and you've got you know, and not, there's no coincidence. There's a North London derby and a Merseyside derby probably on the same yeah. day, and you get people watching it and people going to the games. And I think if it was just more organised like that, you would get more you know bodies through the through the gates, and uh, it's just simple things really. You yeah, know? I think more advertising. Could, could go yeah, a long way as well. Um, yeah. Even you know, like posters and stuff, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, just stuff and just promote the league and promote the players because there is some good players in the league. Um, you know, so I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. So anyway, back to the football. Uh, you're you're flying at the moment, joined top. Yeah. Um, how have you enjoyed the season so far? You've you've had a fantastic season yourself personally. You were called up to Mick McCarthy's squad earlier yeah. on the season and all, but. Just overall, how would you rate the, the the half a season you've had so far? Yeah, I think I think we're doing well. Like you know, I think the team's doing well. I think uh, I think we've more in us. Of course we do, but it's difficult as well when you're playing, you know, three games a week and and um, you know. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but you know you're saying about with Kilmarnock, you had one game a week and you're going back then to playing the, yeah. the Monday Friday and you yeah. could have an EA Sports Cup game. Then yeah, oh, it's difficult, you know, because um, you. You want to be as prepared as you can going into a game, and sometimes you know. I think we played bowls here on a on a Tuesday night with nine men for sixty minutes or whatever it was, and then we went up to Dundalk on a Friday, and you know I think they played on the Monday. So yeah, just stuff like that is is uh, you know it's difficult to to you know prepare as well as you want to prepare, you know, and. Uh, Look, I think we're doing all right. I think we're doing well. I think we could, I think we could do better. Um, the manager's doing a great job with us. He, he has us playing a, you know, a clear way of of playing, and uh, we don't really shy away from that. Everybody knows what they're doing when they're on the pitch. Um, he drills that into us. He's he's a he's a very good manager, and um, you know, uh, I think I think we're doing well, but we could, we could do better. Yeah, I, I remember speaking to you earlier on the season. I think it was after St. Pat's, and you, you'd been playing at like a left uh, wide position. Um, you didn't really seem to be getting the best out of you, in my opinion, from watching. But uh, you moved. You then moved in against Pat's. I think you set up the the ball for was it uh, Greener? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they got the penalty. Then uh, Aaron scored. Yeah. But um, is, that, is that something that you kind of worked on playing you then through uh, the yeah. number ten position? And I think Ron Finn and like Dan Carr have been moved out wide now. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I think. I think. Um, I know there's a lot of rotation yeah, as well. Like. I've been. I've been kind of starting on the right and then drifting in, um, or on the left and drifting in. You know, we do work on stuff in training, um, but at the same time, the manager gives us the freedom to hunt the ball and whatever we see, taking on the ball, he uh, he lets us go and and. and and try and get it, and I think that's big for the team. I don't think he doesn't take that instinct away from you. Whereas if you see, you know, you can move in and get on the ball and make something happen. It's not you have to stay here. You have to stay here. It's you know you can you can hunt the ball and and try and create things. And and sometimes it's 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 not as simple as saying well, you're on the left, you're on the right, you're through the middle. It's it's football's not like that. And um, most of the time it's it's you know if a ball bounces. But then I want the, on the left, and you're closest to you. You're gonna go for it, yeah. you know. So he's, uh, yeah, he's given us the freedom to 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 play this year, and uh, I think it's working. To be fair, I think teams sometimes they don't know whether to mark 
you know, come in with us or, or try and stay in their own positions, you know, so it caused a bit of confusion, but I think, uh, I think, I think we're doing all right this year. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of credit has to be given to Stephen Brady because Shamba Rovers, they obviously finished the season last year very strongly. Yeah. Um, I think they ended up finished third. Uh, but there was a big race between them and Waterford. This, this, this finished the season, Gavin Bazuni was in goal, they were getting lots of clean sheets. Alan Manis obviously came back in, it was obviously huge then as well, helping helping that out. But I think Stephen Brady deserves credit for the for the players he's brought in, yourself included, Aaron. Yeah. Um, because I know, and I'd mentioned to you the other day that um, you know he's almost what places were Cork City in, yeah. in you know yeah. f- fighting at the top for the league. You know, yeah. Well, he was obviously a big factor in why I came to the club. Um, I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to come to the club if it wasn't for him, or you know, what I mean, the conversation probably wouldn't have even existed to come here if it wasn't for wasn't for the manager. So, uh, you know, f- for me personally, he's been he's been brilliant for me. Um, you know, obviously Aaron McInerney coming in as well, top player, um, and the manager's been been good to us because he's a midfield player as well. You know, obviously Stephen McFails there. You know, they they pull us to one side and they'll speak to us and they'll they'll give us advice and just, you know when people want to help you, do well as well, not as for the team and for yourself individually, then it does give you confidence to. And, and it gives you a bit of, uh, you know, I want to, I want to do well for them as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Run through a brick wall. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, uh, not even run through a brick wall, but I want to take the ball in the toy earlier here and try and create something. I try and score a goal because he's given me, he's given me that kind of confidence to, to do that. And he's saying, you know, some, it's not always going to work out. I know I'm not going to play well every game the way I play, but I know that he's not going to. You know, absolutely cane me if I if I don't play well. Do you know what I mean? If I'm trying to do what he's asking me to do, you know. Um. So, and I know the same for for people like Aaron McInerney and Greg Bulger, another top player. So um, he's been brilliant this yeah, season. Yeah, he's been unbelievable, and he's been great for the whole team. And and uh, and for me personally, um, he's he's been really good as well. And we know it's this league inside out, and and um, he's a great bloke as well. And you know, I'm glad to see him doing well and getting the credit he deserves. You know what I mean? Because he's a huge part of this team. Yeah, uh, just uh, on your bromance stand with uh, Aaron McInerney. I know you signed yeah. it around the same time. So, how how nice has it been to kind of have him there to help his boat settle? I yeah, suppose. It's, you know, it's been good. Uh, yeah, I knew him before I came here a little bit, and you know, obviously came in and and clicked straight away. Same with a, a lot of the boys. You know, we have a good group. We have a close group, and. Uh, and that's good as well because we all want each other to do well, and you know we all want each other to push on and 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 hopefully you know you know get some silverware at this club because it deserves it. And um, you know since I came in from the first day, I've been pushing each other in training, and uh, you know I can't say I can keep up with him in the running because he's a machine. But you know it's uh, it's good that we have uh, good professionals in the team and, and all pushing each other. Yeah, I think it's good as well. The fact that Stephen Brady's not afraid to actually bring you team players in. Like you look at James for long and played yeah. against Dundalk. He came up, and in my opinion, done very well did, for the yeah. age of him. He did do very well, and and maybe another manager would have shuffled it around a bit or tried to play a different shape. But you know, he uh, he said, "No, we trust you," and and it's great when you, the manager gives you that belief. But we all see, you know, these young players every day in training and you know pre-season walking their socks off and when they're thrown in we know that they're, they're ready and that they're, they're uh, you know, obviously it's difficult to go and play against Dundalk away in your first game but he done well and, and uh, you know we definitely had all our backing and the managers backing mm. but it's, it's a credit to the manager to throw him in mm, I think it'll stand to him as well yeah, just definitely. having that experience you 100%. know 100% um, but then, uh, lastly, then your European football. How much are you looking to having that back at Tallaght Stadium? Yeah, I'm looking forward to obviously my first time playing in Europe, like European football. So uh, I'm just looking forward to see who we get in the draw, and uh, you know, hopefully this place will be packed and and we'll get a good crowd behind us, and hopefully we can get good results. Because that's the main thing. If we if we do well and you know we get a good result or we put on a a, a decent show or whatever, you'll get people coming back and. You'll get people wanting to go to the to the Dundalk games, the Bowers games, and you know, so that can only help the club and help the league. So it's up to us when when the draw is made to be ready and you know uh, take that challenge on.
Mm, absolutely. Well, I think we'll, we'll, we'll finish on that note. And best of luck in Europe and for the rest of the season. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Nice one, bud.